in the name of Jesus. God was talking, but I wasn't listening Then the flame sparked my heart Ignited the love in me Corazón, corazón You touch my heart, corazón You touch my heart, corazón Welcome to New Hope for Today. I'm so glad to be able to come into your home to minister the Word of God to you. I know that the Word of God is going to bless you because the Word of God says that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word is God. There's power in the Word to save, heal, deliver, but it also blesses our life. And I know that today you are going to be blessed by the Word of God. May God praise the name of the Lord. You may be seated tonight. Hallelujah. I was right after the conference. I went to Colorado Springs and ministered in a church Monday through Friday. And uh, for, it's only a month old. The church is only a month old. Uh, Brother, Brother Ray knows him. The family, they used to go to Brother Malacata's church there in Colorado Springs. When did Brother Malacata pass away? How many years has that been? Quite a few years, that's where, in fact, uh, Solomon's great-grandmother helped start the church in Trinidad, back, I think, in the 1930s. So they go way back, and so I know it was her prayers uh, that brought them into the, into the gospel. How many of you believe, folks, your prayers count for something? D don't, don't ever think that when you pray, the Lord does not hear your prayer. Let me say that again. We're not just doing it to be doing it. We're touching heaven. I like prayer puts you in touch with the God's power. And then life is tough, but God is what? How many of you believe that tonight? Praise the name of the Lord. And so we were there, and then I went to preach to Brother Tim. And I was finished Friday night. I said, I can't get back to Texas in time to preach on Sunday because where I live in Dallas it's about 700 miles. And usually I preach in East Texas. I just couldn't make it. So I called Pastor Ray. I said, um, can you call Brother Tim? He's been wanting me to preach there for a few years. And so the Lord opened the door. But we didn't have Sunday night because of the Mother's Day. And people. he was afraid people weren't going to come back. But uh, with me, I'll preach to myself. Praise the Lord. I have a, fr a friend of mine. He's a Yaqui Indian from Arizona. And when he started preaching, he preached the saguaro cactus. You know what the saguaro cactus are? They have the, the big cactus with the arms. He said, well, they're all lifting up their hands, praising God. And that's how he started preaching. When, when you're a preacher, it's just in you. I, and I love to preach the gospel. And so next Sunday I'll be, and I'm going to get my southern accent back, I'll be in Louisiana. Over there by Arkansas, the northern part of the state, with a good friend of mine, Brother Michael McBride, is that the Silvers of God is over eight, over a hundred years old now. And it's still going. Isn't that amazing? See, the church doesn't die, folks. People say, well, the church is going to die. Uh, religion dies, but the church of God does not die because the church is alive in the presence of God. And you're looking at a, at a preacher up here that by the grace of God, by the mercy of God, I'm alive in Jesus Christ. How many of you tonight are alive if you are shut, I'm alive? Take your Bibles to the book of Psalms chapter 37. Young people, I, I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, a lot of young people, i just thinking, I've been preaching for Pastor Ray over 30 years. The youth... When they were in 18 and 19 back then, they would be in their late 40s or 50s by now. That's scary. 
Wow. Tish, you remember when you were young? Younger? Younger? Uh, Kenzie Savage used to sing this song 40 years ago. Remember that? On his banjo. 40 years ago. Well, 40 years ago. Praise the Lord. What can I sing? <laughs> Brother Robert, stand and ask God's blessing upon this message, if you don't mind. Yes. Amen. Everybody shout amen today. As I was praying about the message tonight, the Lord led me over here to Psalms 37. This is King David as an elderly man. No, I'm not that old. I mean, I'm, I'm not elderly. I'm older. Hallelujah. He, he's elderly, looking back on his life and giving counsel to the younger people. How many of you believe it really pays, I love that little boy, it really pays to serve God? I'll say that again. David served the Lord from his youth. He was a shepherd boy. And, and when you're young and you're serving God, we don't always know what's going to happen to us in the future. David did not know when he was 14, 10, 11, 12, that he was one day going to be the king of Israel. You, you see, you don't just serve the Lord from right now. We serve the Lord for the future. What, what, what Pastor Ray has been doing here all these years, what pa Brother John back here, he, we're praying to pray, Brother John, for your, your Parkinson's back there. He's... I remember when he was singing and he had the, the group and they had a choir at one time and all kinds of stuff. But God is a restorer. But this man has been serving the Lord for many, many, many years. I do not regret, young people, serving God. It's not a bondage. It's not something I have to do. It's something I get to do. Let me say that again. Serving God is not something I have to do. I get to serve the Lord. I get to be saved. It's a privilege to serve the Lord. Can you shout amen today? And today is my birthday, and I would don't know where I would rather be than right here at New Hope Ministries on my birthday. Praise God. So David says to the younger, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. The word fret means don't get angry. Don't get overheated. Calm down. Because there are evil doers and you cannot make them go away. Let me say that again. You cannot make evil doers go away. So it says do not be envious against the workers of iniquity. Do not be envious of those that are evil. Well, I, they have more than me, me, so what? They have a bigger house, so what? They could buy their clothes at Neiman Marcus, so what? They have a house over in Cherry Creek, so what? They have, a, they have 15 Lamborghinis, so what? Brother, let me tell you something. What I have, what you have, they cannot, they cannot buy in a store. Can anybody in the house shout amen right now? Goes on to say in verse 2. I'm going to try to get through this. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green earth. Another herb. The Lord says these evildoers will soon be cut down. Now let me just say something here, and I want you to hear my heart. I do not want to go beyond the Word of God, young people, but I want you to listen to me. God does kill people. But they got real quiet. Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts, 
they lied to the Holy Ghost. And they had a moment to repent, but they would not do it, and God got rid of them. If you're saved, and you're washed in the blood, and you're serving God, and people come against you, and God gives them a space to repent, and they don't do it, God knows how to eliminate people. Let, let, let me tell you something. The Bible says, notice what, let me, <laughs> I'm going to quote the scripture correctly. It says, uh, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. God knows how to take care of you. Don't be envious of them. Don't be jealous of them. Don't think they're more beautiful or, or more handsome or better buff or whatever. Let me tell you something, brother. God will cut them down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Can anybody in the house shout amen right now? In the next verse, verse 3. Trust in the Lord. Everybody say, trust in the Lord. Confia in Jehovah. Trust in the Lord, so shalt thou dwell, excuse me, and do good. Everybody say do good. Be a person of ethics. Tell the truth. Be respectful to, to ministers, to your parents. Be respectful to one another. Honor the Lord thy God. Let me say that again. Honor the Lord thy God. Let me say that one more time. Honor the Lord thy God. That's one reason why, young men, we do not wear a hat in church. Because Christ is your head. We do not cover our head in church. Because in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says that when a man prays or prophesies, that he is, his head is not covered because Christ is your covering. We honor God. Learn to honor God when you're 13. You learn to honor God when you're 14. Learn to honor God in the good times. Honor God in the bad times. Do good when you feel like it. Do good when you don't feel like it. Serve the Lord with all of your heart. Love him with all of your mind. Hallelujah. Can anybody shout love the Lord if you believe it tonight? Say amen. amen. That's David. He's, he's looking back on this. He says this, so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. How many of you believe the Lord will bless you if you honor the Lord and do good? The next verse, verse 4, it says this, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Everybody say, delight thyself. How, let me say that one more time. Delight thyself. Also in the Lord. Everybody say, also in the Lord. Put the Lord first. Put God first. And everything you do, and he will give you the desire of your heart. If, if you're going to serve him, serve him with all of your heart. If you're going to praise him, praise him with all of your heart. If you're going to weep, weep with all of your heart. If you're going to shout, shout with all of your heart. If you're going to sing, sing with all of your heart. If you're going to preach, preach with all of your heart. Delight yourself. Can anybody in the house lift up your voice and shout yes tonight? This passive Christianity where singing churches anymore, really, it's my birthday, I'm going to say it, bothers me. When I see, now I'm not talking about new people in church so they don't understand what we do. I'm not talking about that. But when I see people like this, chewing gum, looking around, Hallelujah. I call those kumbaya churches. Kumbaya, my Lord. Remember those days in the Jesus movement? We, they used to sing a song in the Jesus movement, young people. They used to sit in circles and they, they, they hold hands and they would go, We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the... Remember that song, Brother Ray? We are one in the Spirit. We all just got to... Oh, it oh, just feels so good. We are one. I'm like, brother, let me tell you something. I, if you want to be kumbaya, be it. But not for me. I want to give God everything I have. 
and he'll give you the desire of your heart. How many of you believe the greatest desire is to know God? To serve the Lord. To know his voice. I don't know why God doesn't speak to me. Maybe you don't delight yourself in him. You see, I have to do something. Everybody say that with me. I have to do something. I delight myself. And then the next verse, verse 5, it says this. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You, you commit your life to him. That's David. He committed everything to God. Trust also in him. He trusted in the Lord. And he brought what he promised him to pass. God had promised David that he would be king. He was opposed by Saul for maybe 13 years. We're not sure exactly the time, 12, 13 years there. It looked like it was over. It looked like David would never be king. But he trusted the Lord. You trust him when you don't feel anything. We trust the Lord when we don't see anything. We trust him when we're just out here. We, we trust him and, and we pray and we don't feel anything when we pray. We don't seemingly see the answer. But God says that he will bring it to pass. We, we've been believing God for Pastor Ray, for his healing. We don't understand why he's going through what he's going through, but he's trusting in the Lord. And God will bring his will to pass. We don't have to make it happen. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that God knows exactly how to bring it to pass? If you believe it, shout amen tonight. Uh, I told Solomon at the church I was at, the pastor, uh, there in Colorado Springs. I said, what I love about a brand new church, you don't have a past yet. You've not learned how to have church yet. You're not religious yet. You're just starting out. People are coming in to check you out. Some will stay, some will leave. But you, you're faithful to God. You trust the Lord. You, you believe God has placed me here. And somehow God is going to bring it to pass. I'm going to put my faith in him. Can anybody say amen to that? I, I know we talk a lot about Pastor Ray's ministry, but let me just say something about my ministry. It's been a miracle that I'm an evangelist. When most churches don't even have Sunday night anymore. They don't have revivals anymore. They don't want preaching like this anymore. But God says, don't worry about them. I'll bring it to pass. I called you. I've sanctified you. I've washed you. I baptized you. And the fire is still on the inside of me. And God will open up the door. How many of you believe that God opens up doors that no man can shut? If you believe it tonight, lift up your voice and say hallelujah. I, I want you to know, brother, I don't have to do anything except believe the Lord and trust in him and go in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, I feel that in my spirit. Does anybody believe that God will bring it to pass? I, I preached in jungles of Mexico. I remember going one time with uh, SABC, the Bible school. We went down there. We, we drove to Mexico City. Then we took a bus to Veracruz in the jungle, took a, took a five or four hour trip on a truck into the jungle, had to call across three rivers. There was no traffic. We were the traffic. Then we got to the town and then we had to get on a mule, un burro, to go to the town. We went to Cosero Verde. Uh, Jim Rivera, his wife, Sister Amelia went, Becky Gutierrez, Byron from the Bible School, listen to me. We went there not knowing where we're going to go. There were no offerings received. There was barely electricity. There was not any indoor plumbing. We had to go use the restroom outside. We had to go take a bath in the river.
We, we had to get water from a spring, but we preached every night, and people were set free, and people were delivered, even though it was a hard area. It's not an impossible area. But listen, I, oh, I just felt that for somebody here. Even though it may be a hard area, that does not mean it's impossible. If you think, if you think that, there's, that God is limited, you'll never do anything for God. But the moment you say, I trust the Lord, I don't care how hard it is, it's still not impossible. God can move in the jungle. God can move in the desert. God can move in the mountain. God can move in an airplane. God can move in a train. God can move anywhere. If you believe it, lift up your voice and shout amen tonight. You, you see, David is learning how to trust the Lord throughout, of his whole, out, throughout his whole life. Faith is a process. Faith is a journey. Believing God is a journey. They asked Artie Bishambach years ago, I think it was on Phil Donahue. They said, if you pray for somebody and they fall over dead at the altar, what are you going to do? He said, nothing. I'll go to the next person and pray for them. Now you didn't get that. They asked the great evangelist, Shambach, listen to me. I know of a young man right now, he's only 20 years old. He just, he's a pastor now of a church in Louisiana. Twenty. I'll be preaching for him in June. I, I could be his grandfather. I talked to him the other day. His name was Eli. I said, "What?" He said, "Well, my grandfather is eighty-four. He retired from the church, and he said he he said I needed to take the the church, so I'm the pastor." And we're just trying to keep young people saved. Would you please come back to the church? We'll give you a, ding, a Twinkie and a Ding Dong, and we'll give you something to eat if you'll come to our church. And then there's other young men that are 20 years old, and you know what they're doing? They're preaching. Hallelujah. Can anybody shout amen? This is David. He said, he shall bring you to pass, verse 6, next verse. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. I'm not going to stop there. Go for verse 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Everybody shout with me. Stop worrying about the ungodly. Next verse, 8. Cease from anger. Oh, did I read that wrong? Cease from what? Forsake what? Wrath. Fret not thyself in any way to do evil. Wrath and anger morph into evil. People kill because they become angry. People hurt other people because they become angry. Wrath, they become vengeful. i got to get back. I've got to get back to the guy that hurt me. Brother, let me tell you something. The greatest way you can hurt somebody, pray for them. Stay away from them. Oh, i got to get into the next verse, verse 9. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall what? Inherit the earth. Everybody shout, evildoers. Always remember that. Evildoers will be cut off. I learned a long time ago. You know, sometimes we'll see people leave the church. And, you know, sometimes, it's, you, know, you know, we wonder why, you know, you know, we say something, do something, whatever. But sometimes God does that on purpose. He does cut people off. I, I know this is, kind of, this is kind of hard here. But if it means, listen, if it means for you to fulfill the mandate of God and you're serving God, God will remove anything around you that will keep you from doing the will of God. I've seen that with me. 
He's removed people from my life that I thought were saved, that I thought were my friends, that I thought loved the Lord, but they were hypocrites. I'm not looking for perfect people, but one thing that really disturbs me is a liar. I, I mean, I can handle a lot of sins. Yes, not, you know, I'm not saying I do those sins, but I can handle you know, people that are involved in sins. But, but lying, I'll tell you one thing. The Bible says all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. I'll say that again. All liars will have their place in the lake of fire. You, you lie, you'll fry. Let me say that again. You lie, you fry. Look at your neighbor and say, you lie, you fry. And then say this, turn or burn. Say that again, turn or burn. Hallelujah, Jesus. Next verse, 10. I, 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 can't, I could preach for 15 hours on this. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. I, I, I got to keep going. Verse 12. Excuse me, verse 11, thank you. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of what? Everybody say, peace. How many of you want peace in your family? I'll say that one more. How many of you want peace in your family? I'll say that one more time. How many of you want peace in your family? ¿Cuántos aquí quieren paz en tu familia? Well, if you want peace, you have to have peace, first of all, with God. And then secondly, you have to have peace with yourself. And so my brother here has peace with God. And you have peace with yourself, and I have peace with God, and I have peace with myself, I can have peace with you. But you let one person in the family backslide. You let one of your brothers or sisters in your family or cousins leave God, it's like hell on earth. They get that attitude. Don't tell me what to do. I don't need that Jesus stuff. And you come home happy. Woo! We had a great service. The Holy Ghost moved. We got him, got him, got him out of the grave. We had a great conference. Better base, preach powerful. Woo! And then you come home. And they're watching something filthy on TV. And then you say, would you please mind turning that off? No. Has anybody ever met somebody like that? Anybody like that in your family? It's, it's, it's quiet in here. Hallelujah. <laughs> because this is not show or tell, but it's... <laughs> hallelujah. Is this the truth? But when you serve the Lord, you're going to have an abundance of peace. You know, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to keep going. Are you bored in here? I, I, I'm always in hotels. And uh, in the morning, I, try to, I, I just get up happy. Even if I've been out till 2 o'clock in the morning having dinner with a pastor or something. I get up happy and I go to breakfast. And you see these people. How are you doing? Fine. What's going on? Nothing. Like, don't talk to me. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> Who are you? Are you crazy or something? <laughs> and, being a, you, and then you listen to their conversations at, with the family. I, I've heard people get mad at each other at breakfast. They get mad at the lady that's serving. The oatmeal has lumps. They're not, they have no peace because they're not saved. And this is not a false peace. This is real. 
I have abundant. Everybody say with me, I have an abundance of peace. Next verse, verse 12. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon them with his teeth. The wicked will plot against the pastor, Brother Eddie, Brother Donnie, Brother Robert, you. They'll plot against you, and they want to bite you. Like they did with the Apostle Stephen, or Deacon Stephen, in the book of Acts. I, used, I See, when I started preaching a long time ago now, before any of you were born, I thought when I was 20 that everybody was waiting for me to preach to them. I thought, Brother Robert, everybody was going to love me. I thought, they're waiting for me. Did you ever think that way? They're waiting for me. They can hardly wait till they get to their church. And then I've gone to churches. I was at one church in East Texas years ago. I was in my 20s. It was an independent church. And there's about 200 people sitting there, maybe more. I'd never been there before. Never. I'd only met the pastor one time. And I'm sitting there. And he gets up on the, pul the pulpit before he announces me. He says, I am resigning as of today. And I'm leaving. Brother Chris, would you please take the pulpit? <laughs> so as I'm walking up there, he's walking, by, he's walking out. He looks at me. He said, if you want to have this church, you can have it. And I never saw him again. I go, oh, there's a problem here. And I don't want to be a part of it. But God put me there. And I'm there for two weeks. And the deacons, they were, this is not as someone has got church, thank the Lord. It was an independent. The deacons smoked. The deacons stole my offering. I guess they didn't like me. I had to talk to the presbyter. He's remember how we used to be years ago if you preached for an independent church. You had to get, kind of tell the presbyter, you know. So I, I told the presbyter, Ken Jones, I said, Brother Jones, I just want you to know something. I, I preached for this independent church. Is that okay with you? Oh, yeah, go for it. You know, whatever. And, and uh, so I, I preached for them. And, and, and they didn't, half the church didn't even like me because they just didn't like me. I thought, and, and that's just the way it is. Some people want to destroy you. And the devil wants to destroy you. But how many of you believe that Satan cannot prevail against what God has called? That, that's David, verse 13. Verse 13. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Everybody shout, the Lord will laugh at my enemies. As we say in the south, a day of reckoning is coming. Hang in there. Serve God. Next verse. The wicked have drawn out the sword, have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be upright, uh, right uh, conversation. Next verse, 15. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bowels shall be broken. They come against you, they come against you, but also all of the interaction comes against them. No, you're to hear that. When the enemy comes against you, if you serve God, it's like they're coming against Donnie right here, and all of a sudden something just makes them come like this. Ugh. That's what God will do for you. They will destroy themselves by their own weapon. Can anybody shout amen tonight? In the next verse, verse six, uh, a little of that, uh, uh, a little of that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Next verse. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. Verse 18. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be for what? In the next verse, verse 19. They shall not be ashamed of the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. The Lord will take care of you in the time of famine with inflation. Next verse, 20. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of the lambs. They shall consume into the smoke. They shall, con they shall consume away. Verse 21. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. Hallelujah. Verse 22. 
For such as bless of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. Verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Everybody shout, my steps are ordered of the Lord. Move your foot and say, my steps are ordered of the Lord. My steps are ordered of the Lord. Young people, if you're serving God, praying, reading the word, your steps. Brother Ray is fixing to have to go through some chemo, whatever. But his steps are over to the Lord. Can anybody shout amen? Next verse. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Though the righteous man falleth, he will not be destroyed. In other words, the Lord upholdeth him. Everybody shout, the Lord upholdeth him. With his hand. My last verse, I'm going to give me three minutes on this and I'll be done. I have been young and now I am what? Yet have I not seen what? What? Every shall forsaken, nor his seed, begging bread. David says, I, I was young just like you, sitting in a synagogue somewhere, taking care of smelly sheep, playing a harp, singing unto the Lord. God was giving him psalms, and, and uh, he killed a bear, and he killed a lion. But, and in that time, uh, God was preparing him for the future. Let me say that again. God was preparing him for the future. It's not what people see you do. It's what only God sees you do. It's the victories you win when you're by yourself. When the the lion comes against you, the bear comes against you, adversity comes against you, and there's no one else around you, but you learn how to use a slingshot. You learn how to use the sword of the spirit. You learn how to say, Satan, you're not going to have these sheep. You're not going to have my life. You're not going to destroy me, and I'm going to defeat you out here in this wilderness. Uh, can anybody in the house shout amen? David is being prepared to become a king. Does anybody believe that God God is preparing you to do something more than what you're doing now. If you believe it, lift up your hands and wave it and shout amen tonight. Oh, I just feel this in my spirit. Was it, was it Harold Horton or Stanley Horton? Which one was it? Harold Horton? That went to Harvard or Stanley Horton? Yes, you remember the Hortons, remember? I think it was Stanley Horton. Stanley Horton was an assembly of God minister. Let's not watch you hear me. Stanley Horton was an assembly of God minister. And the Lord said to him, I want you to go to Harvard. This is back at what, in the 1930s or 40s, right there, when Pentecostal people did go to the university. But because he went to Harvard, God was preparing him to become the premier theologian of the Pentecostal movement. We all go back to Stanley Horton's writings on the gifts and the operation of the Holy Ghost. Every Pentecostal preacher will have one of his books. Because God was preparing him. He said, God, why would I go there? He says, just trust me. I do not want to get in the, listen, I would never get in the way of the will of God for any of you. David says, I was young. Now I'm old. And he's looking back over his life. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Now, if you keep backsliding in and out, in and out, don't blame God about your misfortunes. Please understand that. We're not talking about, David did have his issues, but he always repented. He says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. 
I've never seen them begging. I want you to hear me. If you're saved, you are not a beggar. We are workers. These people that stand on a corner with a sign, all they want to do is get high. You say, well, don't you have compassion? I have compassion because they're, they're so wasted. But I, I'm going to tell you something. I have no compassion on people that are lazy. You didn't get that. They're hiring everywhere. You, you know what will cure the gang problem in North America? A job. Everybody say a job. Say that one more time, a job. You know what has destroyed America? Listen to me, young people. Is a welfare system. They have taught a whole generation. When did welfare, when did welfare come in, Brother Eddie? Was it the 50s? When welfare came in, they started telling you, you're owed by the government. You're owed. So we're going to give you a house, and we're going to give you a clinic, and we're going to give you a, 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 a WIC card, but we, we, what we want you to do is stay in this area. Don't move out. We'll give you some cheese, some commodities. Now, you have to stand in line. Do I really have to stand in line to get my, my free cheese? Yeah, you got to stand in line. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Let me say that one more time. Hallelujah. Let me just cut to the chase. Nobody owes us anything. You're not owed because of whatever reason. And the, the people who I feel sorry for are handicapped people. The, the Down syndrome, the blind, the deaf. But even many of them say, I don't want a handout. You, you know who I'm for helping? Little Sammy. Becky's little brother who is born Down syndrome. He can't work. Or a child that has been born deformed or someone that has lost a leg. Or someone that gets Alzheimer's or, or, or gets dementia in their elderly years. But people that are your age that can work. And say, well, I'm just going to let the, I'm digging myself in here. But I am leaving tomorrow, so. Everybody say with me, nobody owes me anything. Say it again, nobody owes me anything. Say, I'm going to climb out. Hell, let's say that again, I'm going to climb out. David was poor. David, but he had a job. David was a shepherd. He was from a poor family. But God did not see the poverty. He saw a boy that had the heart of God. And when the Lord called him, and now he's, he has become king, he's a multi, 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 probably billionaire by this time when he's writing this. And he's looking at all the people that have served God. He says, I've never seen one of them forsaken. I've never seen one of them begging bread. I've never seen one of them a victim. I've never seen one of them overcome. I've never seen one of them destroyed. I have seen them blessed by the power of God Almighty. Can anybody in the house shout amen right now? You, when you look at David, when David sinned, he had to give a sacrifice. And they were wanting to give him a sacrifice. He says, no, I'm going to buy my own sacrifice because I'm not going to give God anything that does not cost me something. Hallelujah. He was not a, a moocher. He was a giver. Can anybody in the house shout amen tonight? Oh, I feel that in my spirit tonight. Let young people never be a moocher. Be a giver. Be someone that gives your life to the cause of Jesus Christ. Can anybody lift up your hands and shout amen tonight? I, I want everybody to say, tell me right, say with me, I am not a beggar. Say it again, I am not a beggar. I'm a worker. The righteousness of Christ. And watch God 
Mo, would you come? Whoever's going to do this, play something softly on the keyboard. Everybody say this with me. God is going to bless me. How many of you are blessed tonight? Young people, I want you to hear me. You need a job. Mowing grass, pulling weeds. And then you tithe. You know how old I was when I started tithing? Nine years old. Everybody say, tithe. Do you have a job? Do you tithe? Wait, what do you do, honey? You work at the Denver Zoo. The what? I bet it is a cool job. And you tithe off the, your check. You're blessed. And you're a giver. Do you have a job? How old are you? 15. Do you have a job? Do you have a job? How old are you? Do you have a job? How old are you? Do you have a job? Do you have a job? Brother Ray, how old were you when you, you got a job? You're what? Fourteen. And what did you do? the immigration was coming to pick up people that didn't have papers, I would press that button so they could jump the fence. Hallelujah. But it was a job. Yeah, let me say something, folks. You know what David is learning as a shepherd? Boy, he's learning the work ethic. You learn how to get along with other people that are not like me. And, you, and they watch God bless you. I just feel this in my spirit. And, and you're, you're five minutes early to get to work. And you leave five minutes later. And your job sees, your boss sees that. And he says... I can, I can use that boy. I can use that girl. And I'm going to put them as a manager. And all the other people are envious of you because they come in wasted. Monday morning. I have a hangover. I'm, a, I'm 45 minutes late. But not you. Could you play something else, not a minor key? If you could just, not a minor key. You, you be, thank you, honey. You begin to, to be, God begins to bless you and everybody around you becomes, becomes envious of you. Well, why are they always getting a promotion? Well, because they're always on time. They do a good job. If you mow, I just say, when I used to mow grass, it's never, it's never finished until you edge it. You follow that? And you sweep up the grass. And that person that, that hired you will say, I got a neighbor down the street. Hallelujah, Jesus. Who's our sister that, and I see this very respectfully, she's a little bit old. Sister, you're still cleaning houses. How old are you? You're going to be 79. She's still cleaning houses. Do you, you must do a good job. Because who, li listen, young people, listen to me. Realistically, and I don't say this disrespectfully, sister, because I love you. But naturally, who would want to hire a 79-year-old lady to clean your house? You think, can they even get down and do anything? But see, God has blessed her. Yeah. 
Are, are you a tither? Do you have more work than you can handle? Sister Josette, she's not here because she's taking care of her husband. Now, I was praying about this today. I'm almost done. Now listen to me. Brother Frank worked all of his life. But because now of physical problems, he can't. But all of his life, he's worked. And now it's his time to be helped. His wife, Josette, you all know her. She cleaned houses for how many years? A lot of years. We went over to the house, their house, last Saturday before I went to Colorado Springs. She had just come in. She was filling in for her daughter. You see, when you're good at what you do, you'll never, you'll always have something to do. Did you get that? What do you do, brother? I, you're a pipe fitter. Do you do a good job? Do you have work? Every day. Are you faithful to that? He just got promoted. What, what are you now considered? A supervisor. Because you're, the, I guess the guy above you saw something in you because he can trust you. You're not going to rip him off. You're not going to take advantage because you're saved. You're a Christian. You're a man of God. And you become an example. Has anybody ever criticized you? All the time. And you see, let me tell you something. You see, you can criticize everybody else. And you can say, well, they just think they're all that. And you don't do anything. Let me say something, young people. God wants your life to shine for Jesus. When Brother Ray says, come down here and worship the Lord, you should be the best praiser in the church. I'm going to sing that in a moment. Get up, get up. Not yet. We're older. I've had two knee surgeries. Not knee replacements, but knee surgeries. I can't do that forever. But you can. And you were like this, please praise the God. Please praise the Lord. Please lift up your hands. Brother, we should be the first to say, I'm out here to worship God. How many of you came to lift up the name of Jesus? Let me ask you, how many of you have, can, Tish, how many of you, many years have you been serving the Lord? 40 years. How long have you been serving the Lord? 99. Has God blessed your lives? You have a new house. Is that correct? God has blessed you. Stay in the house of the Lord. Keep serving Him. Keep tithing. Keep glorifying the Lord. Can anybody say praise the Lord? You say, well, well, how can they have a new house and we don't? Because they've been faithful longer than you. I do not expect young people to be the mature level of a 40-year-old man. I don't expect that of you. But what we can expect is not to be lazy and to serve the Lord and to be righteous and to take this thing seriously. And you know what I've learned a long time ago? Girls, come over here. Come, get, let's get ready. We're going to sing this song in a minute. It's time to get up. Everybody say, it's time to get up. How many of you want people to take you serious? Would you, come here, come here. H how old are you now? 50. He's 50 years old. When did you start working on pipes? Four years. And what did you do before that? A manager. And what did you do before that? Or was that what you've always done? Okay. So he becomes a pipe fitter only four years ago, and he's already... A, a supervisor? Supervisor. He's, he's, he's criticized. Because I'm sure there have been, been people working in that company longer than you have. 30 years, and they're still at the same level. You don't get this. 
distilled at the same level. And now he's only been there for four years. Why? Because he's, God's righteousness and God's favor is upon him. If you, I don't know who this is for. If you do not take yourself seriously, they won't. Listen to me, young people. If you don't respect yourself, people won't respect you. No, you just come back up here, brother. Brother Pete, I'm sorry. Just stand right here with me. Listen to me, young people. I want you to hear my heart. I'm not against you. I love you. But if you don't take yourself serious and you want to be an eternal boy till you're 50, that's how people will view you. Girls, if you view, your, view yourself as a woman of God, you'll dress that way. And if you'll take your, yourself serious and respect yourself, they will. But if you don't respect yourself, nobody else will. Because to, for a man to become a supervisor in four years with, as a promotion, he had to take this thing serious. Yeah. And you're still going to school. He's still an apprentice. And look where God has placed him. Okay, and anybody give the Lord today? I know that the word of God blessed you richly. But I want to ask you a question today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to lead you to him. It's the greatest experience you'll ever have in your whole life. I just want you to pray this prayer with me. If you don't know him, today would you say, Lord Jesus, I confess I am a sinner and I have sinned against you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart and wash my heart with your blood? I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, would you call us on the phone number on the screen? We want to keep in touch with you. We want to help you continue with your walk with God. Or if you need any help of some sort, would you call us? If we can help you, we want to be there for you. May God bless you till the next time.